Hi everyone, it's Lindy on here from Pink Whisper Designs. Today we're going to be making a really fun Halloween mixed media tag. We're going to be using lots of products from the Tim Holtz collection. To start off, we're going to be using the frame tags from Tim Holtz. And this is part of the brand new collection as well. This is not the Halloween collection, but his regular collection. And you can see that that largest tag is quite large. It won't fit in that little envelope. So it is separate in your packaging. And you get the three sizes of tags and then you get three reinforcers as well. I'm using the mixed media heavy stock from Tim Holtz. And for ink, I'm starting off with the wild honey. I'm going to use a sponge dauber to add ink to this frame. This frame die will create this beautiful embossed area. So what I'm going to do is where it presses down into those areas, we're going to add some ink colors. Now I'm using the dauber again, because I can add more than one color here using the dauber. You could also use a brayer or you could take your ink pad directly to the die. Any of those ways would work just fine. But again, I want to add a second color. So what I'm going to do is just use the dauber to add this ink all the way around. Now I am using a Distress Oxide ink. It just goes on a little bit better. You could certainly use a permanent dye ink here as well. You just want to make sure when you're done you clean off your dyes really well. So you just want to wipe them down. If you're using the water-based inks as I'm using here, you can just spritz them with a little bit of water when you're done. Now I've got the spice marmalade and again I'm not going to completely cover this in the spice marmalade. I'm just adding a bit of color here and there. Now I want to lay this down onto my heavyweight cardstock. I'll tape that down just to make sure it doesn't move around. It does have that ink on it now. I'll put my top plate on and run that through the die cutting machine. I like to run it through fairly slowly and then I like to run it back through a second time. I want to give that ink a little bit of time to transfer to my cardstock. So I'll run that through twice and then you'll see it, it leaves that inked border and that beautiful embossed area all the way around the tag. So once that's done, let's add a little bit of the Gathered Twigs Distress Oxide ink all around the edges. I'm just going to antique this just a little bit. We don't need to come in too far because we are going to be adding some pretty pattern paper. And that'll add a li little bit more interest. And then we'll add a bit more of that gathered twigs later on. So you can see we have that inked up. Now we can grab some pattern paper. I'm going to the Photo Play Thankful Paper Pad. And this is a six by six double sided pad. And we're going to be using that mustard color here. But these papers are just beautiful. I love these. Great for fall projects. So once we've decided on the pattern we want to use, you could certainly select any of those. I'm going to take that largest tag and die cut that. Now I'm cutting away anything that's embossed. So that embossed frame all around the tag, I'm going to cut that away. I just want to make it a little bit smaller and I want it to fit nicely into our larger tag. I want to distress the edges of this as well, so I'm using my little distress tool from Tim Holtz, and I'll go all around the edges with that. Now you could certainly just tear your paper if you prefer to do that. Either way would work just fine. So you can see how that looks. Once that's done, let's go back to that spice marmalade. And using my blending brush, I'm going to add a little bit of ink coming in from the sides, just a little bit further than I will come in with the gathered twigs. Uh, with the gathered twigs, I really just want to frame the tag. So that's going to sit right inside our larger tag. And our beautiful inked up framed border will still show nicely there. So let's glue these two together. I'm using the Nouveau Deluxe Adhesive. So for the dies, we're using the brand new Tim Holtz Sizzix Thinlets Colorize Set. This is called Trick or Treat. 
And if you look down below, I'll have a link for you where I use that little eyeball. I did a spooky Halloween card with that eyeball. But for today, we're going to grab the pieces we need to create that little candy corn. And these are clearly marked on the back of each one as to which pieces you need to create that candy. And you can see they're clearly marked as well when we die cut them. They'll create little lines there so we know exactly how to piece these together. And on the back side, it tells you what color that piece needs to be. So each of the pieces are clearly labeled. For paper, I'm going to use the Strathmore Bristol Smooth 100 pound cardstock, and I'm going to color mine. I'm using the Distress Crayons set number three, and there's also a set number four. And again, these are part of the Halloween 2022 collection. So let's go ahead and die cut these. And by the way, those crayons are a pearlized crayon, so it's going to give it a beautiful pearlized shimmer to it. So I'll go ahead and die cut enough to create five of the candy corn. Now I've got that first crayon, and that color is called Burning Ember. And I scribbled a little bit of, it, of that crayon onto my glass media mat, and then I added a bit of water, but you can see that it was very light. So now I'm just going to grab some more of that crayon without adding any more water. And I'm using my finger to blend these out. I just find this is the easiest way to blend the crayons is to use your finger and you can really press it out and smooth it out. And now I'll take the yellow crayon, which is called Harvest Moon. And I'm going to do these two pieces. Now these two pieces were labeled yellow. So that larger one is going to be a little bit darker than this smaller one. The smaller one is the highlight on the candy corn. So I'm le I let that dry just a little bit and then that larger piece, I'm gonna come back in and add a bit more color to that one just to darken it up. And I'll leave that smaller piece on the lighter side. Again, it's going to be the little highlight on the candy corn. So now for the top piece, we're leaving that white and that other little piece white. And here I'm going to use that third crayon from the set just to add a little shadow, and that's called Iron Gate. I'm placing it along one edge, and then I'm just pushing it up onto the cardstock with my finger and just creating a little bit of a shadow there. We will be adding a bit more shadowing to this, but I'm going to start off with this color. So now all three colors that we, we've used have that pretty pearlized finish to them. And I'll show you that a bit later. Once I have those done, I'll add a little bit of that Nouveau Deluxe Adhesive and glue these together. And again, you can see right on there that it's clearly labeled on that base piece that we're starting with, and you know exactly where to place these. This one is fairly simple, and in that other video where I used the eyeball, that was the first time I had used the colorized, and I really thought it was going to be much more difficult than it is. It's actually quite simple. And it's quite relaxing just to die cut all your pieces and just sit and do your assembly. So I found it to be really fun. Um, not, not as intimidating as I thought it was going to be. So now I'm going back to that gathered twigs and I'll add a little bit of a shadowing around the edges. I'm actually just trying to distress these a little bit. I thought they looked a little bit too new. And there you can see that pearlized effect they have. And to release more color from these crayons, you just twist the bottom there and it will release more color, almost like a lipstick would be. Next for dies, we're going to use the Tim Holtz Sizzix Biggs Potted Number no. 2 die set. And this is a steel rule die. That just means that you can die cut more than one piece of cardstock at a time. Depending on the thickness of the cardstock, you can run through several pieces of paper. And for cardstock, I'll use the two-tone wood grain cardstock. The one on the left is called gray, and the one on the right is called the black two-tone. And the gray one is from the Christmas Collection 2022, and the black one is from the Halloween Collection 2022. 
So I'll die cut the little straps for our pot out of the black and the pot itself out of the gray. We'll need two sets of those straps, so I'm going to run that through one more time and we'll have four set four pieces of those straps. And then we can go ahead and glue those on. But first, I thought this pot was a little bit too long for our tag. So I'm using my scissors and I'm just gonna cut away a little bit of excess there, maybe about an inch, an inch and a quarter or so. I'll ink this up really, really quickly with some gathered twigs. Just using that small blending brush again and I'm going to go all the way around. Just leaving the center nice and light. We can glue these little straps in place. And I think these add a lot to these little pots. There are other ways you can put the pot together. You can have a little lip on the top of the pot if you want. All of that is included in the die set. So you can make different versions of this pot, which is really nice. I'll cut away any excess. Now let's add a few little embellishments. These are the Halloween droplets from the Tim Holtz Ideology Collection. Again, from 2022. And I'll grab those bronze colored ones, that medium size. There's three colors in there, kind of a bronze, black, and a platinum color. And each color comes with three different sizes. So I'm using that medium size here in the bronze and I'll just add those to the little straps on the pot. I'm going to go ahead and glue the candy corn inside the pot. And I'll put four inside the pot and then we'll use that fifth one on the outside. I'm going to set those aside for now and I'll use the mini stencils set number 35 from the Stampers Anonymous collection. We're going to use that one in the middle. And I'm using the Distress Texture Paste. This is the Crackle Paste. So when this dries, it will give a really pretty crackly effect. So I'm going to grab a spatula and just spread some of that crackle paste right over top of my tag in a few different areas here. And then once you do that, you want to let that sit and dry. And if you have any excess here, you can scrape it away while it's still wet. So you can kind of fuss around with that a little bit. And then you want to make sure you clean off all your tools when you're done using the paste. You don't want any of that to dry on your stencil or on your spatula. I'll just add a few more areas of that paste. And then we'll set that aside to dry. I'm just scraping away the excess along the edges. And now that it's dry, you can see that really cool crackle texture that we have. And I don't want it to be so white, so I'm going to fill in the little cracks with the gathered twigs. I'm going to use that little blending brush and push some ink right down into those little cre crevices. And that's going to give it a really pretty aged look. I'm using the Black Soot Distress Oxide ink, and I'm placing some on my glass medium mat. I'll spritz it with a little bit of water from my Distress sprayer, and then I'm going to spatter this panel. At this point, I thought I was only going to spatter the tag, but later on, I decided to spatter the little candy corn and the little pot as well. And I'll show you that later. So now that I have that all spattered again, just kind of tying everything together here now, I'm going to remove the backing from that tape and I've got a nice clean tag that I'll attach to the back of this. That'll just finish this off. And I die cut that, that tag for the backing out of that heavyweight mixed media cardstock. You could certainly have inked up that framed border again if you wanted to. I decided just to leave that plain. And then I'm using that blending brush just to blend 
those edges a little bit. I've got some black cording and I'm going to wrap it around up here at the top of my tag. So I cut quite a bit of it and I'll just kind of randomly wrap it around. I don't want it to be perfect. I'm just going to use my reverse tweezers to hold that in place while I tie a knot. And then I'm going to go ahead and tie a bow. Those reverse tweezers come in handy. It's like a second pair of hands. And I'll be using them a little bit more later on. I actually have a couple of them because sometimes when you just want to hold things in place, it's really nice to have those available. So I've got some ranger multi-medium matte glue and i'm tucking a little bit underneath the knot of that bow just to hold that in place so it doesn't wiggle around again i'm clamping that down with the reverse tweezer and now i've got my adornments these are the crossbones again from the tim holtz ideology collection and I'm going back to that multi-medium matte glue and I'm going to glue this down. And I'm covering that little hole on the tag. I'll clamp that in place and let that dry. So let's grab the word candy from our Tim Holtz Sizzix Thinlets Alphanumeric Classic Lowercase Set. And this set includes several of each letter or number. So it's really nice to get 96 pieces in this set. So if you're creating a word with more than one A, you get five A's and B, you get four B. So it's really nice. So, and we'll also go back to that photo play paper pad. We're going to grab this one here. I want that brown paper. We're going to go ahead and die cut the word candy out of that brown pattern paper and some black cardstock. We'll die cut it several times out of the black and then we'll go ahead and stack these up. So I think I used four layers of the black letter and then on top I put that brown letter. So it's quite thick. I wanted these to be like little chipboard letters. Now we can go ahead and glue these on the tag and I'm using that multi-medium matte glue again. And for this first one, the letter C, I'm going to kind of tuck it in between that cording there. Going back to my reverse tweezers and I'll clamp these down as I go along. So I went ahead and added all of those letters. Now I can take that little pot and trying to figure out exactly where I want to position that on the tag. And then I'll go ahead and glue that down. Then I'll flip this whole thing over and we'll add some foam tape. We're going to be using the 3D foam tape from iCraft. And it's a really nice, super strong tape. I really like using this. I'm going to add some nice strips of it along the back here so this stays up nicely. This is, again, the 3D foam tape. So that will give a little dimension to our tag. I'm just removing the backing there, and then I'll position this down. And it will hang off the tag just a little bit there. Now, for a little bit more interest, I'm going to the Buttons Galore and More little embellishments. This is called Stranger Things. And I just love this little set. I just thought it would be fun to add a few of these little whimsical pieces. Got these little swirly pieces. And then on the letters, We'll add some of the ghosts, the moon, and the little bats. But keep in mind, this is a great time to use some of those little embellishments you have in your stash. 
And I also want to mention that all the products I'm using today are listed and linked down below and also on my blog. I'm using my Marvy Jewel Picker to pick those up. And I thought these little ghosts were just so cute. Just kind of floating around here on the letters. So once that's all set, I wanted to add a little bit of the Distress Glaze. So I'm using my Pink and Main Anti-Static Powder Tool. I'm just going to put a little bit of that down in the corner there, just so that my embossing powder doesn't stick anywhere I don't want it to. Then I'm using my Ranger Emboss It Dabber, just to dab on a little bit of clear ink. This is embossing ink. It just comes in this little dabber form, which makes it easy to place it where you want it to be. And then I'm using the Distress Embossing Glaze in the Wild Honey. And I'm going to use my Nuvo Dual Tip Spoon and sprinkle a little bit of that glaze on. And you, if you watch my videos, you know I love these glazes. I've done several videos using the glaze. I will list and link down below the butterfly glaze card that I did that you might enjoy. So let's go ahead and heat set this with the heat tool. Once I had this heat set, I wanted to add one more layer of the glaze. I just wanted to thicken it up a little bit. So I, I'm going to pat on a little bit more of that embossing ink, add some more of the powder, and then I'll heat set that once again. And it'll darken up the glaze just a little bit. Just keep in mind these glazes are translucent, so anything that's underneath there will show through, but you do get that beautiful, shiny effect. I've got my Nuvo Surface Sweet brush and I'm just brushing off any excess there, just cleaning up the tag a little bit. And here's where I decided to come back in and add some of that black soot spatter to the, the candy corn and the little pot. I just wanted it all to kind of tie together. So let's take a quick look at the finished tag. And you can see that we have that pretty pearlized finish on the candy corn. And then we have all that interest in the background with that crackle paste and some of those little embellishments. So I really hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, please hit the like button and subscribe. And don't forget to visit me at pinkwhisperdesigns.com. As always, thank you so much for joining me today. I hope you all have a great day. Take care. Bye-bye.